part two. <laughs> yeah, I always thought about uh, the people for, for many years to come, you know, the history of uh, the King of the Ring tournament for Elf War. Yeah. Uh, King, because I really think uh, King Booker was the, uh, was the best King no, no, uh, of all time. What, what, I, I, you better King than Jerry King. Don't, don't, yeah, don't, don't, don't say it. Don't tell him I told you that. <laughs> like he had the, 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 I forgot the move. <laughs> the figure. It, it, uh, it was Thaddeus. It was Thaddeus. Hell of a lot. Thaddeus. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I literally tried to go out there and make it something special. Make it something for, I always say, you know, uh, just say for instance, uh, you're uh, 16 years old and you uh, get your first kid and um, the Eisner Brothers, you know, song was playing. Yeah, you may not remember, you may not remember the girl's name. Uh, you may not even remember what she looked like, but you're going to remember that first kiss when that song come on because you felt something. And uh, that's something I always want to do was go out and make the fans feel something opposed to just watching it. And when they, when they saw King Booker, they felt a certain way about it. They loved it or they hated it. One, one, one or two. Uh, but uh, it was something that they would always remember. How, how was it to, to get your accolade as the as a Hall of Fame? You know, uh, and it was a great speech, by the way. Thank you. Um, I never uh, thought about becoming a Hall of Famer until that moment. You know, when they you know uh, came to me with that. Uh, me being a Hall of Famer would have put you in the Hall of Fame. I never thought about that moment. Uh, I never imagined, you know, my body of work being worthy enough to be. You know, a Hall of Famer. I, I just feel I was just one, one of the guys who just wants to go out and put, put the work in, as well as uh, represent. Mm -hmm. um, I knew I had a lot of people watching me, a lot of my, you know, uh, my race watching me out there, and uh, me having to go out there and do well. Uh, that that really meant a whole lot to me. Uh, did I think it was gonna, you know, catapult to me the Hall of Fame status? I never thought about that, but uh, I think uh, me just uh, thinking about. What my journey really meant is what enabled me to, you know, get to that point. Uh, looking back on it, uh, do my body of work measure up? Of course it does. You know, um, it's, it's not even a question. But uh, when you're doing the work, it's not something that you can really think about. If you did, I don't think there's no way that you could really make it or ascend to that position. Summer Slam, two days a week. Yeah. John Cena versus uh, Daniel Bryan. Who we got? Uh, you know, Daniel Bryan's hungry, man. Uh, the position that he hadn't been in. Uh, John Cena has been on top of the mountain for a long time. You know, the thing is, you know, John, you know, uh, of course he's going to go out there and give it his all, you know, but, you know, it may be uh, one of those times where he may actually want to lose himself. It's really hard being in that position. Um, and you, you get to a point that when you want somebody to beat you, but you don't want to lose. That's what John Cena's going to be facing come Sunday night. You know, so, uh, because it's really, really hard to, to uh, stay in that position for so long. I mean, it's the hardest job in the business, being the WWE champion, you know, from a promotional standpoint, from a, uh, going out and signing an autographs from a business standpoint, from a wrestling standpoint. Uh, you got to be on call 24 7. And John Cena has been on call for quite some time now. He's going to be playing plenty of middle challenge for John Cena. To, to, to actually step up to, uh, to be able to go out there and pull it out. So I'm going to go with Daniel Bryan. That was a hot ass answer. That was one part of it. That was a good one right there. Yeah. The sleeper, I call it a sleeper. Uh, yeah, I think you're going to turn the house around. You know, definitely, uh, you know, this one I always said was the most underrated WWE superstar perhaps in the history of um, WWE. Uh, he's a guy who knows how to win. Um, he's a guy who's uh, he's a veteran of the sport. He's wily. He's cagey. Uh, never can underestimate uh, what Christian's going to go out there and do. And right now, just the, the, uh, just that combination right there. Just that that uh, those two, uh, Alberto Del Rio, Christian. Oh, Del, Del Rio can't take nothing away from him. He's a guy who's uh, he's. Uh, Totally uh, an, an assassin. He totally uh, knows you know, the business as well as he don't mind being in a fight. You know that's one thing. I know uh, those Kairos. You know he's, 
his uh, life before, you know, he's an MMA guy, you know, he's um, always been in the fight, you can tell he's one of those guys, to, you know, he's a, he's a pretty handsome guy, but he still want to go out there and get in the fight, he don't mind messing his face up, so um, who's going to win that matchup right there? It's going to really be hard to say, uh, because uh, Alberto Del Rio is still hungry, but Christian has that one thing to prove only to himself, uh, knowing that he's in the late uh, phases of his career. Can he go out there and pull that off? I mean, is this going to be his time? Uh, is this going to be his night to capture the World Heavyweight Championship? He's got a lot to fight for, so I'm going to have to go to Christian. Brock versus Sierra. You know, uh, Sierra Paul, uh, you know, his man card was called on Monday night. You know, and uh, he answered. He answered the call. You know, and uh, he stepped up in, in grand fashion. Yeah. You know, um, no surprise. Rock Lester land as well as you know, sending Paulie dangerously running for the hills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Curtis Axel. You know, he was left leg as well. Um, you know, uh, Sim Punks, He's gonna. He's gonna bring it. But um, I tell you, in a one-on-one -on -one fight, you know, uh, against Brock Lesnar, uh, I gotta go against. I gotta go with Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar made her um, Sam Punk Sunday night. Wow, man, look at T keep all the way one thousand, huh? Man, ladies and gentlemen, go pay some money to whoever you got the cable with. <laughs> Tickets still available. Tickets are available if you're in the LA area. <laughs> Man, SummerSlam is serious. They ain't been a build-up like this since WrestleMania. Yeah, it's the second biggest event of the year. Man, man, Booker T is the man. You understand? Pleasure's mine. Appreciate it. Already. Oh, 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 oh. One more question. Man, WrestleMania is in my backyard. Yeah, man. You all need. What yeah. you got, Pop? You know, man, I already got the, uh, the Winnebago. <laughs> I'm getting it all shined up. I'm make that trip down from Houston. Uh, it's right down. Yeah, yeah, right, right down, down the street. Yeah. You know, make that trip. Um, I don't know exactly what's going to be, what, what my role at WrestleMania is going to be, but I'm campaigning. You know, I might have that itch that I might want to scratch. You know, just one more time, WrestleMania might be the ticket. New Orleans could be the place. You know, I mean, a lot of people don't know that I was born in Shreveport, so I am a native yeah, Louisiana. You know what I mean? So um, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, heading down the highway and being a part of WrestleMania. It's going to be totally off the hook. Man, we looking for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No. It's the fire time, fire time. Five times, five times. <laughs> and you know John Cena stole that. He stole that from me, yeah. You know I mean? we, we, we've been doing this. Record. Just for the record. We've been just doing this. All this right here. Uh, oh, ain't, ain't nothing but this right here. <laughs> Book a T, baby. Yes, sir. <laughs> we got